Rosette's system of laboratory protection presents Rudy Valley. Your time is my time. With lovely Helen Jepson and Joe Cook. There's no time like our time and no one like you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rudy Valley welcoming you to another field test program. Tonight... To the accompaniment of calliopes and sawdust, pink lemonade, and peanuts, we delve briefly into the career of the mighty P.T. Barnum. Occupying our star's dressing rooms are that whimsical gentleman from Indiana, Joe Cook, and the golden-voiced soprano of the Metropolitan Opera Company, Helen Jepsen, who portrays the role of the great Swedish soprano of yesteryear, Jenny Lynn. And if we listen closely, a little later, we may hear... That's lovely, Helen. I know you're going to enjoy playing your role tonight, for Jenny Lind epitomizes everything that a singer hopes to achieve. Yes, indeed, Rudy. As we at the Metropolitan often put it, that gal was really in the groove. <laughs> Helen, I can see you'll be right at home here. Incidentally, you may be in for some serious vocal competition this evening, when that renowned tenor, Signor Josefo Cook, stepped up to the microphone with something like this. La uh, thank you, Joe Cook. Thank you. <laughs> see, see what I mean, Helen? Well, sir, Rudy, you got to admit it's very seldom you can find a voice with such a high range and low caliber as mine. But Rudy, did you say you were going to do a play about a circus? Yes, Joe. Tonight we turn back the calendar to the romantic days of P.T. Barnum. And great days they were, Rudy. Back in 1850, when a man was a man, and a woman was just something that walked down the street, closely followed by a bustle. <laughs> and speaking of bustles, Rudy, did you know that I used to work for a bustle factory delivering bustles to Lillian Russell? It must have taken a lot of muscle to hustle a bustle to Russell. <laughs> yep, it was quite a tussle. But those were the days, Rudy. Yes, Joe, those were great days. And in P.T. Barnum, they produced the greatest showman who ever lived. He certainly was. And don't forget, it was P.T. Barnum who first said those immortal words, there's one born every minute. Of course, yes. at that time, he was running a rabbit farm. <laughs> and when I talk about Barnum, Rudy, I know what I'm talking about. Well, only last night, my grandpa was telling me how he used to work for P.T. Barnum back in 1850. Of course, back in 1850, Grandpa was only 84 years old. No. Wait a minute, Joe. Yeah? If your grandfather was 84 back in 1850, that would make him uh, 174 years old today. Yep, Rudy, and he looks every bit of it. <laughs> Why, back in 1850, Rudy, Grandpa and Grandma had the greatest aerial act of all time. Grandpa would swing off the trapeze, turn eight somersaults in the air, and as she came down, Grandpa would catch her with his teeth. But one day, they had a little misfortune. What happened? Did Grandpa forget his cue? No, he forgot his teeth. <laughs> Gummed up the act, eh? <laughs> Joe, your grandpa must have some wonderful memories. Did he uh, ever see Jenny Lind? Did he ever see Jenny Lind? Why, he was telling us only the other night how he and Grandma went to Castle Garden to see the debut of the Swedish Afternoon and Gale. Afternoon and Gale? You mean Night and Gale? No, Grandpa caught the matinee. <laughs> Say, you know, I'll bet old P.T. made a barrel of money out of Jenny. No, I don't think money meant a lot to P.T. Barnum, Joe. Barnum got his happiness by putting on the finest show ever seen by human eyes. He called his circus the greatest show on earth, and I guess it was. He asked nothing more of life than to stand out there in the center ring, singing the praises of his countless attractions. The clowns, the freaks, the acrobats, the animals. P.T. Barnum had the right idea. Barnum had the whole works tied. Everywhere he went, he used to pitch a tent. The folks who saw the tent go up would wonder what's inside. He's the man who said, advertising is the life of trade. Made the first pink lemonade, made the first big street parade. Made all happy, young and old, made a hundred million cold. Barnum had them doped out. Barnum had them roped out. Barnum had the right idea, you hear me repeating. Barnum had the right idea, you hear me shouting. Barnum had the right idea. Mr. Barnum, 
Mr. Farnham. What is it, Herman? Oh, something terrible happened in the freak show. The bearded lady's beard has grown too long. Why don't you cut it off? Oh, we can't. Why not? A couple of midgets are in there playing Stanley and Livingston. <laughs> what inefficiency. If someone would only take care of the details around here. I need a partner. That's what I need, a partner. Did I hear somebody say partner? If you want a partner, brother, I'm just the man. Bailey's the name. Bailey? Bailey? What makes you think I'd choose you as my partner? Oh, I don't know. I just thought the name Barnum and Bailey had a familiar ring. <laughs> and now that we're going to be partners, Mr. Barnum, we'll have to make some financial arrangements. Say, how much cash have you got? Mm, about $10,000. Very well, Barnum. You put up $10,000, and I'll put up the rest. That'll give us a total of nine thousand dollars. Nine? What? <laughs> what do you mean nine thousand? I I just put up ten thousand. Well, I just drew my first week's salary. <laughs> Barnum, I congratulate you on acquiring a partner like me. You know, I come from a long line of circus people. Why, just last night my grandpa was telling me that he used to run the circus Maximus in Rome. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Bailey. That would make your grandfather over two thousand years old. Yep, and he looks every bit of it. <laughs> Bailey, I like you. I'll think over your proposition. Let's take a walk around the lot. I want you to meet with some of the people you may be associated. Fine, Barnum. Let's go. These are my star attractions, Bailey. This one over here is one of our best. He's Jojo, the dog face boy. This is Mr. Bailey, Jojo. <coughs> Hiya, Bailey. <coughs> uh, hello, Jojo. What do you know, no? Come on, Bailey. Now, over here in this cage, we have that fierce, fiendish, frightening, savage monster, the wild man of Borneo. Uh, but he looks like Brenda and Cobina in the morning. <laughs> Don't go too near the bars. I'll, I'll make him talk. Wild man, talk. Say something to us. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's nothing personal. Say, Barnum, who was this little fella coming along here? Oh, that's my famous midget, General Tom Thumb. Hello, boys. Oh, hello, General. You know, General, your profession really interests me. Just how did you happen to become such a big success in the midget business? Oh, I just started out in a small way and stopped. <laughs> General, that's very interesting, but there's something I'm simply dying to ask you. Tell me, how do you happen to be so small? Well, old chap, it's a perfectly normal phenomenon caused by an under-secretion of the pituitary gland thereby arresting the functional development, however, in no way hampering the metabolism rate or any of the normal respiratory uh, processes. All right, if it's a trade secret, don't tell me. <laughs> Say, Barnum, how come this little fellow uses those great big four- and five-cylinder words? Cylinder? Well, he can't help it. In his spare time, he writes script for Bing Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bailey, I've thought it over, and I'm going to take you in as my partner. Gee, that's great. You'll never regret it, P.T., what a team we'll make, Barnum and Bailey. Why, we'll put on the biggest and best shows ever seen. Who's the greatest of the world's great showmen? Who pulls laughter out of your abdomen? Barnum and Bailey, Barnum and Bailey. Barnum and Bailey, two shows daily. Why does everybody loudly clamor for our circus full of thrills and glamour? Music and mirth, your money's worth. It's the greatest show on earth. Hey! Oh, Barnum and Bailey. The greatest show on earth. We'll give America the greatest show on earth. Rudy, I wish I had Barnum's gift of expression to tell our listeners about Red Raspberry Royale, the August ice cream of the month. That's easy. Barnum would have called it stupendous, colossal, the greatest ice cream treat on earth. <laughs> he wouldn't have been far wrong at that. It's a real sensation. Crushed red raspberries in vanilla ice cream. That's the seal test supervised ice cream for August. Not raspberry ice cream, but real red raspberries, ripe and juicy, folded into smooth, creamy vanilla ice cream. And when they blend together on your spoon, ah, you'll agree that Barnum was right. 
It is the greatest ice cream treat on earth. Red Raspberry Royale is an ice cream created for you by Seal Test member companies and produced under Seal Test laboratory supervision. It's here only for August, and it's sold by dealers featuring Seal Test supervised ice cream. For your protection, always insist upon dairy products which are supervised by Seal Test men in white. Whether you're buying ice cream, milk, or other dairy products, look for the red and white Seal Test symbol. A little later, we'll tell you where to buy Seal Test supervised dairy products in your community. But now, back to Rudy Valley as P.T. Barnum, Joe Cook as Bailey, and Helen Jepson as Jenny Lind. We find Barnum revealing to Bailey his real ambition in life. You know, Barnum, it's been great working with you. Barnum and Bailey will become a great institution. Yes. We'll have more fun than the circus. <laughs> but you'll have to carry on alone, Bailey. I've decided to step out of the circus business for a while to go into the concert field. Barnum, you in concerts? Well, you can't do it, B.T. I've got to do it. I'm going to manage the American concert tour of the greatest singer in the world, Jenny Lind. Well, if you're going to give up the circus to manage a singer, I'm out of the partnership. But you haven't seen Jenny Lind. She has eyes like... Uh, and she has lips like... Uh, she has hair like... She has a... She has a... She has? Yes. I'm back in the partnership. <laughs> but I still say... It's no use, Bailey. My mind is made up. Jenny Lynn's debut tonight means more to me than any circus in the world. I'm on my way to see her now. Come in. Oh, it's you, Mr. Barnum. Yes, Miss Lynn. I'm sorry I'm late, but I was... My, but you look beautiful. Hmm, thank you. Do you know that's the first really nice thing you've ever said to me? Well, I tried. Oh, you've been wonderful. Your gifts and your flowers. And all the things you've done for me. But sometimes, I think I'd rather have you say nice things than do them. Wait until you hear my plans for tonight. Castle Garden will be covered with flags and bunting. A thousand lamps will shine. The largest orchestra in New York will play for you. It'll be as stupendous as all three rings of the greatest show on earth. And it's all for you. Is it really for me? Or are you doing all this because you are the mighty Barnum? No, Miss Lynn. It's all for you. You see, I'm not much good at making pretty speeches. I realize the difference between us. You belong in a concert hall. I belong in a tent. But I guess I just can't stay away from you. Fools rush in... Where angels fear to tread And so I come to you, my love My heart above my head Though I see there's danger there If there's a chance for me Then I don't care Fools rush in where wise men never go, but wise men never fall in love, so how are they to know? When we met, I felt my life begin, so open up your heart and let this Jenny, when you sing tonight, when you reach the highest note, higher than a tightrope stretching across the big top, will you say to yourself, I sing that note for a man who thought the circus was the whole world until he met me? Oh, of course I will. Just for you. I'll be waiting in the wings, listening. Goodbye till then, my dear.
friend, you've all been so gracious that I should like to sing for you a song that is dearly loved here in America, The Last Rose of Summer. And now, as cheers and applause rock Castle Garden, suppose we take a moment to tell you where to buy the new Seal Test Supervised Ice Cream of the Month. Here we go to all those communities where Seal Test Supervised Ice Cream and Milk are sold. Ready? In New York City and suburbs, the Seal Test Supervised Milk is Sheffield Farms. The ice cream is Hydrox. In Staten Island, the ice cream is Castles. In northern New Jersey, it's Castles and Moglia. All over this area... Hydrox, Castles, and Moglia dealers are featuring that thrilling new Red Raspberry Royale, the Seal Test supervised ice cream for August. It's really two treats in one. First, the smooth, creamy goodness of our famous vanilla ice cream. And second, the tangy sweetness of red ripe crushed raspberries. And how they blend together into one grand and glorious treat. Enjoy some now, tonight. Ask your Hydrox, Castles, or Moglia dealer or Red Raspberry Royale. Sheffield Farms Company suggests you try Select homogenized milk, containing 400 added units of vitamin D. It's Seal Test Supervised. Now back to Castle Garden, where Jenny Lind is receiving a tremendous ovation. Isn't it wonderful, Bailey? 22 bows. New York has never seen anything like it. She'd be the toast of America. Wasn't I right, Bailey? Wasn't she all I said, and then some? Oh, I don't know. For real singing, give me an old-fashioned tea kettle. <laughs> I'll admit a tea kettle can't hit high C, but name me three sopranos who can sing while sitting on a red-hot stove. <laughs> ah, you don't know anything about music anyway, Bailey. Oh, I don't know anything about music, huh? Why, I come from a long line of musicians. Why, my grandfather was only two years old when he helped Rossini write the Barber of Seville. Now, wait a minute, Bailey. Yeah. This is 1850, and the Barbara Seville was written only last year. That'd make your grandfather exactly three years old. Yep, and he looks every bit of it. <laughs> oh, P.T., why don't you forget this concert business? Your place is with your circus. Are you really in love with this Scandinavian canary? Yes, Bailey. For years, I've been starved. This beautiful Swedish girl brought me many things that I was hungry for. Bailey, that's love. In Sweden, they call us smorgasbord. <laughs> It's no use arguing with you, Bailey. You just don't understand. Well, I do understand one thing. You're a circus man, and she's a concert star. She's not for you, P.T. Oh, no? One of these days, you may read a headline in the papers, 
P.T. Barnum wins the Swedish Nightingale. Oh, that's too long for a headline. They'll just make it, Barnum gets the bird. <laughs> Better think it over, P.T. No, my mind is... Here's Jenny now. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll be getting back to the circus. I got to see a man about a dog-faced boy. <laughs> Goodbye, Bailey. Jenny. Jenny, you were wonderful. Oh, do you really think they liked you? Liked you. They loved you. And it'll be that way all over America. It'll be the greatest concert tour in history. The country will be at your feet. Oh, it sounds so wonderful. And best of all, it means we'll be together. Yes, and I hope we'll be where the scented night of summer covers field and city with her veil of blue. All the lanes are full of straying lovers murmuring the words I say. Just a little love, a little kiss, just an hour that holds the world of bliss, eyes that tremble like the stars above me, and those little words that say, Practically on our way. Oh, I'm so excited. I could just... Oh. Hi, Barnum. Haven't seen you for a week. Oh, hello, Miss Lynn. Oh, good evening, Mr. Bailey. Hello, Bailey. Say, I heard you folks were leaving on your concert tour, so I just dropped down to wish you tally-ho. Mighty nice of you. Uh, by the way, how's everything at the circus? Oh, fine, P.T. Getting along nicely, eh? Oh, sure. Things have been swell since the fire. Fire? What fire? Oh, just a small blaze. Nothing to get excited about. Of course, we did lose a fire eater. Severe burns? No, indigestion. <laughs> he saw all that free fire and made a pig of himself. <laughs> but we haven't had any real trouble. You don't call that trouble. What else happened? Oh, a few minor items. A giant got arrested for peeping into a penthouse. And the dog-faced boy has distemper. But we'll be all right as soon as we get the man-eating lions and tigers back. The, the, the man-eating lions and tigers are loose? Yeah, of course. The whole thing would never happen if lightning hadn't struck the tent making the elephant stampede. Just a... Well, that's enough. That's enough. So you call yourself a circus man, Bailey. Why, you blundering... Well, nuisance. have a nice trip, Barnum. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's some delicious fruit for you and Miss Lynn. Uh, uh, keep it, keep it. Oh, gosh. And after all the trouble I had taking it away from the monkey. <laughs> well, I guess I better be running along, Barnum. And I had to pick you for a partner. So, well, so long, Barnum. And don't worry. Everything's fine. Fine. That's Bailey. Jenny, I'm afraid I've got to go back and straighten things out. Yes, of course you must. We won't be apart for long. You take this train, I'll follow you in the next one. No, my dear. You won't follow me. What do you mean? Oh, I've felt it ever since we met. You belong with the circus. Why, it's your whole life. But don't you understand? I'm giving up the circus, leaving it behind. Oh, for a week or a month, you might do that. 
Then the circus would call you back. And my heart would break to see you go. It's better that you go now. No, Jenny, no. Oh, no, this is goodbye, my dear. Oh, I'll think of you so often. And when I sing my song, I will say to myself, the highest note was for P.T. Barnum. Step right up, folks. Get your tickets for the greatest show on earth. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Only 25 cents the fourth part of it. Hey, buddy, what's the idea of trying to sneak in there without a ticket? Well, Charlie, I never needed a ticket before. What? Well, holy smoke, it's P.T. Gee, it's great to see you. Look, gang, it's Mr. Barnum. What's all the excitement? Back to you. Well, it's the prodigal son. Welcome home, P.T. Well, don't stand there. Pick me up. <laughs> home, yes, Bailey, you're right. I guess this is my home. Barnum and Bailey, the same as before. Raising our big top so folks can be kids once more. And as time rolls onward, long after we're gone, Barnum and Bailey's show must go on. Yep, belly up, go the acrobat, send up pack a cat. story of Barnum this evening, but we're sure the great showman himself would have approved. We owe the mighty Barnum a tremendous debt for making the circus an inseparable part of American life. And wherever a tent is pitched today, wherever the clowns, the acrobats, and the elephants are bringing moments of happy forgetfulness, there I like to believe the spirit of P.T. Barnum still lives. Next Thursday, we will present our version of the discovery of Hawaii by Captain James Cook. Edward Everett Horton, lovely Harriet Hilliard, Teddy Hart, Ray Kinney and his Hawaiians will be here to visit Hawaii with us. Hawaii, Rudy. You know those grass skirts the natives wear? Well, my grand. Good night, all. <laughs> the Valley Company hopes that many of the New England Seal Test listeners will be at Old Orchard Beach tomorrow night and the Kimball Starlight Ballroom in Linfield, Massachusetts next Tuesday. Be sure to look for the red and white Seal Test symbol. This is Rudy Valley saying good night. The Interest Incorporation and Companies are subsidiaries of National Dairy Products Corporation. This is the National Broadcasting Company.